Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you live from Budapest. I hope everybody has had a good week, staying healthy and strong and looking forward to a good weekend. Hi Lydia, hi Jaspal, hi Zahab. Nice to see many students in the class. Hi Ashraf, good to see our members in the class as well. Today we are looking at the reading section. Specifically, we're looking at a reading passage, a brand new one from our exams. And we're looking at how to answer quickly and how to give the right answers. This lesson is brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Please visit us there, check out our courses, and for general IELTS, visit us at gieltshelp.com on both of our websites. We have tons and tons of materials to help you get prepared, improve your communication, your English, and your band scores. Our websites look like this. This is the academic with the blue background. Click that big red button to join the premium package there. And with the general IELTS, it's the green background. Click that big red button to join us there. Also, make sure to uh, check out our apps. You can get the app Academic IELTS Help. Link the app to your web account, ahelp.com. And General IELTS Help app links to gieltshelp.com. So uh, do that if you haven't already. And if you have questions, uh, just send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com, and I will gladly answer any questions that you have. If you want our exam books in hard copy to follow these classes to work on at home, you can check out Amazon, search Amazon for A Helps Academic IELTS or G Helps General IELTS. All right. Uh, Daljeet, if the volume is low on your end, turn up the volume, use a headset. I believe it's quite good. If anybody else is having trouble with the volume, let me know. Okay, so today reading, uh, tomorrow we will have a couple more classes. We'll have a question and answer session for members. Uh, and uh, then we will have a speaking part three practice class for everyone. Okay, let's get into today's lesson. This is our passage for the day. It's a brand new one. This is coming out of our eighth exam that's in development uh, right now. The title, always read the title, never skip the title. That's a really bad idea. So for quick reading and quick answering, the title is very important. The title here is Berlin from 1945 to 1990. So we have four and a half decades, 45 years of Berlin's history. Now, uh, of course, for the IELTS, it's a good idea to have uh, some knowledge of some of the major world events in the last hundred years. Uh, Berlin is certainly a part of the last uh, century of human history, uh, very importantly. So uh, when you read this title, Berlin, from 1945 to 1990, and you think about that, you visualize it, what comes to mind? So Zen Frederick says Germany. Yes, of course, Berlin is the capital of Germany. So... That's a good starting point. Okay, so think of 1945 to 1990, Berlin. So what comes to mind when you think of Berlin in this time frame? Okay. Um, Amidjad says before and after independence. Uh, Erkin says Berlin divided by the wall, the Berlin Wall. Yeah, what was that? So two sides of Berlin, right? So Berlin divided by the Berlin Wall after World War II. Okay, and what was that division? So why was that wall divided? So that created East and West Berlin, so East versus West Berlin, absolutely. And what was that division? So who was in control of East Berlin? Who was in control of West Berlin? That's a very, very important uh, part of modern history, okay? 
So Prashant says, I think the U.S. and the Soviets. That's right. So Soviet and U.S. control. Okay, yeah, absolutely. East Germany was controlled by the Soviets and West Berlin was controlled by the U.S. And what else did that mean? So what does that mean that East Berlin was controlled by the Soviets? So it wasn't just controlled by these two powers, but it was controlled by different kinds of ideologies. Uh, what were the two different ideologies that um, occupied it? Uh, Naveen, skimming and scanning will not work for high band scores. Okay, So you have to read the passage if you want to get band 7 or higher, especially for IELTS these days because it's even more challenging or even less possible. Uh, yeah, so Saul Nelyar says that, well, that wasn't just the Soviets in the U.S., but it was a communist system versus a capitalist system. Yeah, exactly. So communist versus capitalist system. Yeah, so uh, hopefully um, you think about that. Ashraf Hitler was a little bit before. He was finished by this point. He died at the end of the war as far as we know okay yeah Erkin it's right East Berlin was oriented to communist ideology that's right so East and West Berlin Soviet US control communist versus capitalist system so if you can think about these ideas before you begin this passage you're definitely going to do a lot better uh, when you're reading and when you're answering the questions Okay, so we've thought about that. Fantastic. Now we're on the right track. We've got our head in the right space. And now what we want to do is look at the questions. So we go, okay, let's take a look at the questions. Hopefully get a little bit more information and um, see what's going on here. So uh, questions uh, 14 to 20 as this is passage 2. So passage 2, usually the question numbers are around this. So it says, reading passage one has seven paragraphs, A to G, which paragraph contains the following information? So here you have to match the information to the correct paragraphs. So we can read this type of question because it means all of this information is somewhere in this passage. And these kinds of sentences will give us kind of an overview of the passage content of the information so uh, let's read these together with me uh, a treaty which allotted control of german territory to four countries now when you're reading these sentences in this matching information to paragraphs you want to try to think of other ways uh, to think about these words as best as you can so instead of treaty a treaty would be an agreement, okay, uh, which allotted, allotted means gave, okay, control of German territory, region. So you want to be thinking of these kinds of synonyms as you read this because in the passage you will likely not see the same words. You're going to see some different words which will hint at the information, okay, uh, for countries, for nations. Okay, so in your mind, when you're doing the actual exam, you want to kind of think about how to paraphrase. So an agreement that gave control of German regions to four different nations. Okay, all right, the next one. A barrier is built between the two German nations. So a wall is constructed between the two sides of Germany. Okay, that would be my paraphrase there. Okay. Uh, Rocky, these are the questions. The article's coming later. All right, uh, Berliners are cut off from essential goods and services. So the people in the city are separated from the necessary merchandise and services. Uh, revolutions in other nations cause East Germany to demand change. Uprisings in other countries lead East Germany to want different situations. The division of Germany into two parts, the separation of Germany into two territories, a push up, a push and pull between Soviet and Western interests 
in Germany, a struggle between Soviet and Western uh, interests in Germany. The Allied powers bring millions of tons of supplies to the people of Berlin. Okay. All right. So there we go. We've read those. We paraphrase them in our mind as much as we can, nice and fast. At home, we do that on paper. During the actual exam, we do that in our head just to help us connect these. Okay. All right. Uh, so now we have questions 21 to 26. 21 to 26 are true, false, not given. These questions we just leave, so save time. Um, we're not reading these questions. So Raj Preet is asking, do we read all the questions? No. We don't read the true, false, not given because we have false and confusing information which is not in the passage, so there's no logic to read true, false, not given, uh, because they will simply just confuse you. So you have to save those until the end of the passage. And you can see a lot of our members, Boomi, Sammy, Jainil, saying, no, 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 don't read those. Uh, it's not good. Okay. So uh, only read questions that have information which is found in the passage. Okay. It's a bad idea to read questions and information that's not in the passage. Okay. Muhammad Azat with an angry head is going, don't read it. You're just going to do more harm than good. Okay, so now what we do is we actively read the passage. And again, students, the IELTS uh, test makers, the IELTS is made by what's called the ESOL examination board. They're a team of professionals who have uh, university degrees in how to create uh, valid, reliable exams, and they're working very, very hard all the time to make these exams uh, work similarly to a college exam, whereby you cannot uh, do the exam at a high level by just skim reading or trying to match words. It just won't work, okay? So you have to read. All right. Uh, Hassan's asking, if I read the true, false, not given, to just give me visual markers to understand the passage. But Hassan, <clears throat> it could give you false visual markers. It could mislead you into false visual markers. And Hassan, it, since the mind is not linear, okay, it's not a linear machine, the human mind, um, by the time you finish the passage, your mind will have trouble separating what it saw between the passage and the true, false, not given. So we've tested this lots of times with students and we definitely discovered that those students who read the true false not given questions before the passage not only waste time but tend to score lower okay so we've tested that lots okay uh, so let's read this and we'll do some active reading okay I'll tell you what that is as we do it so let's read together this is reading so don't just listen to me this isn't a listening exercise this is a reading exercise so read and if possible, read aloud, okay? That means read in a way so you can hear yourself, all right? Uh, Paras, if you want to get band seven or more, you should definitely read the whole passage, yes. Okay, here we go, so read with me. After World War II, Germany became two countries. The Western portion, controlled by three of the Allied powers, Britain, France, United States named the Federal Public of Germany, or more commonly, West Germany, and the Eastern portion controlled by the final Allied power, the Soviet Union, named the German Democratic Republic, but more commonly known as East Germany. The current German capital of Berlin, then located entirely in East Germany, was similarly divided between the Western powers and the Soviets. So actively reading here, we visualize Germany, okay? And Germany is divided into two, East and West, Soviet, US, UK, and France, okay? So we visualize that and we visualize Berlin, which is located in East Germany being divided into two as well, okay? So all of that is in our minds. That's how we read actively, okay? We keep visualizing, we process the information, we lock it into position, 
in sequence, and you'll see why that's so important. Okay, so this is the introduction. This is, you're right, Sammy, the background to Germany during this time period. Okay, then we keep reading. And yes, I know some of you are thinking, well, this seems like it's really slow, but it's not. When you're doing it on your own, when you're reading silently during the exam, it doesn't have to be super fast. It just has to be nice and steady. You have about 10 minutes to read the whole passage. That's lots of time. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Here we go. So paragraph B, World War II ended with the capture of Germany by the Allied powers. The natural question was, who would take control of the newly captured territory? The four most powerful Allied countries, Britain, the United States, France, and Soviet Union, came to an agreement at the Potsdam Conference in May 1945. They divided the country roughly, evenly, into four parts. Notice something interesting, students, that uh, we said uh, a treaty, and instead of a treaty, we just saw that word agreement that I paraphrased during the questions right here. Okay, so that's how much that paraphrasing can help. All right, so they divided the country roughly evenly into four parts. The British would control the northwest, the French would control the southwest, the Americans would control the southeast, and the Soviets would control the northwest. Berlin was also partitioned, the French in the northwest, the British in the west, the Americans in the southwest, and the Soviets in the east. These divisions were never meant to be maintained in the long term, but they were. The division of Berlin became representative of the division of the world, divided between two superpowers, West and East, the U.S. in the West and the USSR in the East. So here we're following 1945, right after the war, and how these places were divided, okay? All right. So we start to get the idea as readers that here we're going to have a chronological type of reading, and that's very important to recognize at this point. Chronological means chronos. Chronos means time. So chronological, logical according to time. Okay, so we're going from 1945 to 1990. Okay, recognizing that will really help you. All right, so keep reading with me. Uh, once allies, the Soviet and the Western countries could not agree on a reparations agreement, a treaty which would punish the Germans through economic means. The Western countries wanted a relatively open German economy. That is, they wanted Germany to remain self-sufficient. The Soviets, on the other hand, wanted to punish the Germans for the millions of Soviet deaths suffered during the war. But such punitive measures are often cited as a key cause of the Second World War. As German reparations were humiliating and debilitating to the German economy and the German people. This resulted in hardship, poverty, violence, and ultimately the rise of Hitler. The Western nations did not want to see a repeat of such a humiliation. Because of this disagreement, negotiations between the two sides collapsed, and ultimately diplomatic relations as well. The Western countries, in a response to the collapse in the relations, merged their zones at a national level in 1947. In their combined zone, they advocated the revival of the German economy so that the German people were not completely reliant on financial aid. The Soviets feared this union because it gave the collective more power than the Soviets had in the region. Okay, so again, this is our third paragraph. We're visualizing this disagreement. Hopefully you understood that uh, the Western powers didn't agree with the Eastern Soviets. Uh, the Western powers wanted uh, the Germans to be economically independent, to thrive. The Soviets wanted more punishment, more control. Okay. 
Uh, Ashraf, this paragraph isn't just related to the distribution of Berlin. I think that was more uh, paragraph B, but it was. It's this paragraph is related to um, the punishment of the Germans following World War II. So how are they to be punished, and what are they allowed, and what are they not allowed? So I think that's kind of what's going on here, much more so. Paragraph B was more about. Um, how to uh, how to divide the land between these powers? Okay. All right. So let's go on to the fourth one here. D. Not all paragraphs are that long, so just hang in there. Keep reading. The tipping point for the Soviets was the introduction of a new currency in the Western zones. A day after this took place, the USSR imposed the Berlin blockade, the first major international crisis of what came to be known as the Cold War. In response to the confederation of Western sectors, the Soviets blocked all railroad and marine access to the Western controlled sections of Berlin. With the stroke of a pen, Berliners, 2.5 million of them, had no access to their basic needs of food, electricity, and medicine. Ooh, so here again we want to visualize this. The Soviets are angry that the West joined forces and they created a blockade. So they basically blocked all movement of goods from uh, West to East Germany. All right. The Western response to this Soviet provocation was to institute what came to be known as the Berlin Airlift, a year-long effort that involved 700 aircraft to deliver supplies to the cut-off sections of Berlin. During this time, 270,000 flights delivered approximately 2.3 million tons of supplies to the city. Without this effort, Berliners would have starved. So here the Americans, the Brits and the French said, okay, if you block the road, if you block access, no water, no boats, and you're visualizing all of this, then we'll go by air. So we'll just take planes and drop in the food, drop in the clothing, drop in the supplies. And they did that. Okay. F. So again, very visual. Okay. You should be able to keep a catalog of the information so far. Uh, the introduction of the new currency and the resulting Berlin blockade and airlift were key causes of the hardening of relations between the Soviets and the West. Over the next decade, relations between the two sides deteriorated to the point that in 1961, the Berlin Wall was erected by the East Germans and Soviets between the two sections of the city separating the Soviet-controlled East German section from the Western-controlled West German sections. The wall would become a powerful symbol for the conflict between capitalism and communism and between the United States and the USSR. The German people, once adversaries who drew the Soviets and Americans into common alliance, were now pawns in a dangerous game that was being played across the globe. Again, visualize clearly this paragraph is about the Berlin Wall being constructed and not only separating the two sides of Berlin, but emphasizing the struggle and conflict between communism and capitalism. Okay? All right. Nightbot says, I could be a history teacher too. I love history, it's a part of our past. And it creates our present and pushes us to the future. So it's good to know a little bit of history going into your IELTS exam. Here we go. I believe this is the last paragraph. Uh, the partition of Berlin lasted until 1989. Revolutions against communism in other Eastern European countries earlier that year brought about change in East Germany as well. The East German people revolted, and after two weeks of protest, the East German government relented and opened up the border on 9th of November, 1989. Over the coming weeks and months, people 
gleefully chipped away at the wall. Demolition of the wall took 17 months to complete. German unif unification officially took place on 3rd of October 1990. What was once an ideological battleground between East and West would eventually become what we know Berlin as today, a singular cosmopolitan city of people working towards mutual prosperity. So last paragraph, conclusion, end of the Berlin Wall, brings us into uh, 1990. Okay, so quite clear, quite visual. Again, reading this whole passage, you're going to do a lot better uh, than if you try to just skim read. Um, why? Because skim reading would really not be a good idea here, especially since this passage is very chronological. It tells a story from 1945 to 1990. So if you read it, it makes a lot of sense. If you're not reading it and you're just skim reading and you're jumping from 1990 to 1961 to 1945 back to 1989, then it's going to be really confusing, okay? So especially this kind of a passage makes much more sense to read in an ordered way. And then you can answer the questions without having to go back and skim read all of this information. So uh, keep this in mind, students, to answer quickly and effectively and to get those high band scores. Here's a couple of points and then we'll answer these questions, okay? So in order to do well in the reading section, um, you should read the passage in about 10 minutes. 10 minutes is a lot of time, okay? 10 minutes, even 12 minutes is okay. Then you should be able to answer at least 60% of the questions confidently without having to search the passage. Reading is like the story of the turtle and the hare. Hare is a rabbit. Okay. You must be the turtle. Use consistent and steady strategy. This will lead to overall faster performance and more correct answers and less energy, okay? So it burns a lot of energy when we see students flipping pages like a crazy rabbit uh, searching for keywords and answers, okay? So Nightbot says, I am the turtle. <laughs> and that's what you should be. Be one with the turtle, Nightbot. Be one with the turtle, not the rabbit. Okay. All right. So now let's look at answering these questions. And let's try to do some of these without looking back at the passage. Or if we have to read or look at the passage, then uh, we know exactly where we're going, okay? Hafsa says, I am the hare. <laughs> Don't be the hare, Hafsa. Okay, um, a treaty which allotted control of German uh, territory to four countries. Uh, where did we read that? In the first, third, second, third, or the third, third. So we should know at least what part. It was coming from the beginning, the middle or the end. And we have a good idea that that was coming from the beginning, and it was. And a lot of you are saying, hey, that's easy. That was B. That was very clearly stated. Now, notice what happens. I'm going to show you here what happens if some of you are thinking keywords, and I'm skimming and scanning. So some of you might say, ooh, I'm going to skim read for this word treaty, okay? Um, because you're using skim reading uh, strategy. So you start skim reading. And you'll realize that you're, you don't see the word treaty in here because here you actually see the word agreement, which is a synonym. And then you keep reading 
And then you hear, you read um, reparations, agreement, a treaty, which would punish the Germans. And you're skim reading and you go, aha, there it is. Whoosh, yes, awesome, I got it. So now I'm going to answer C. And because you didn't read the information, all of this, which is very important, uh, you just got this first question wrong. Okay. For those of you who read the passage and realized that, wait a second, agreement is a treaty. It even tells me that in paragraph C. Uh, it's paragraph B that clearly explains this information, and you got it right. Okay. So that's the danger of skim reading, and the IELTS test makers use this kind of strategy all the time. So if you're looking for keywords and skim reading and scanning, you're going to be in big trouble, especially if you need a band seven or more. Okay. So B is the correct answer. Uh, let's keep going. A barrier is built between two German nations. So here we're talking about the wall. We talked about that. Um, so the wall, where was that? Some of you are saying, I think that was F, where we got into the wall. Yeah, uh, I remember two things. It was a short paragraph, and I remember it was near the middle, uh, kind of late middle. Um, okay. And uh, it was the Berlin Wall. Okay. So a lot of you are saying F, so might as well check, start with F. Okay, so... Uh, the Berlin blockade, the airlift, okay, and then uh, in 1961, the Berlin Wall was erected. So F is good. And for those of you that were confident that it's F, I mean, you might want to quickly check, especially if you know that it's the right one. Uh, but if you're really confident, then you just go F and you go to the next one, okay? Um, Berliners are cut off from essential goods and services. I remember that was the blockade. Okay. Uh, so, and I think that was before the Berlin Wall, if memory serves me correctly, because it was first the blockade, then the airlift, um, and then the Berlin Wall. So this was kind of D or E. Okay. A lot of you are saying, I think that was D. Nice. So good active reading, everyone. So we go back to D. Okay. The tipping point for the Soviets was the introduction of a new currency, so the new money in Western zones. A day after this took place, imposed the Berlin blockade. Okay. 2.5 million people had no access. No access means cut off. So very good. Okay. Look how clever many of you are with this, right? because you're doing active reading, so you're just flying through. Um, students, notice that even with all of my explanations here, we're only taking about 30, 40 seconds on each of these questions, okay? You have uh, roughly 13 questions to each passage. If you're only taking 20, 30 seconds, which is actually a lot of time, but just thir 20, 30 seconds for each question, You've got loads of time, okay? Reading in 10 to 12 minutes and then answering in 20 to 30 seconds, that's the magic of the turtle, okay? That's the magic of the turtle, all right? Okay, uh, 17, revolutions in other nations cost e cause East Germany to demand change. Great, so now we're getting near the end, right? So... I think maybe G, that was the last uh, paragraph potentially, right? Uh, because that came after F, right? So EFG, so we're coming right to the end there uh, where it's the breakdown of the wall. Yeah, that's right. Very nice. Look at all of you clever students. Okay, uh, 18, the division of Germany into two parts. So where Germany is divided into two parts. Um, that one should be pretty easy. Hopefully everybody gets that one. Okay. Yeah, very good, Abhishek. Very good, Bumi. That was the introduction, right? Following World War II, Germany is divided into two parts. That's the introduction. Very nice. Okay. Number 19, a push and pull between Soviet 
and Western interests in Germany. Hmm. So that's where the conflict starts to happen. So again, that's probably somewhere uh, in the beginning, maybe B or C possibly, a push and pull between Soviet and Western interests. So uh, Kavit is saying, Kavit Nagyev is saying, I think that was C. So if you're like, I think it's C, go check it, okay? You have enough time. If you're answering every second question with confidence, then you have time to check the ones where you're not 100% sure. So you go back, see, once the Soviets and Western countries could not agree on reparations agreement, a treaty which would punish them through the economic means, the Western countries wanted open German economy and the Soviets wanted to punish them. So yeah, we know it's C, so very good, okay. So again, we're confident here and we go, yeah, that's C. That's where Soviets wanted punishment. The Americans said, whoa, whoa, let's take it a little bit easier. That's what caused uh, the Second World War to happen. Okay, the Allied powers bring millions of tons of supplies, this should be an S here, uh, to the people of Berlin. Okay, that was the airlift. Hopefully you visualize that. That was in response to the blockade. And you are absolutely right. That is E. Okay, so the Americans say, hey, you don't want to let food through to the German people? We'll just airdrop them in. Airdrop in all of the food. And that's what they did. And then came the Berlin Wall, right? So... After that came the Berlin Wall. All right, so a lot of clarity. Um, students, do you see how this passage, these questions are much easier to answer when you read the passage and get the information in the correct order rather than look? Can you imagine how difficult this would be if you're trying to search for all of this information, if you're scanning for this information? Just imagine how much longer uh, the time would take, right? So everybody following me, like if I said to you, okay, uh, let's start from the beginning, but this time you have to search for the information and you don't have any idea of this passage, you would probably say, hey, whoa, 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 let's not do that, <laughs> okay? So I bet that you would agree with me on that, okay? All right. Um, Roshni says, I make it easy. Uh, Roshni, it's practice. If you practice, it becomes easy. Okay. All right. Let's go on to these true, false, not given uh, questions. So again, true, false, not given. The right strategy is the key to speed and correct answers. True, if the statement agrees with the information. False, if it contradicts the information. And not given, if there's no information on this. Okay. Yeah, Hassan, thank you for um, sharing that because that's what a lot of students need to hear. Uh, we do have so many students like Hassan who say, yeah, I've tried skimming and scanning. I've tried it this way. This way works way better. Okay. Um, Real diamond, yes, no, not given are very similar to true, false, not given. They're basically the same question. Just make sure you put T when it's true and Y when it's yes. Okay. All right. Um, 21, uh, pre-World War II Germany was divided into two separate nations after the war. All right. So um, the first question we have to ask is, is it important to know whether or not um, before World War II, uh, Germany was divided into two separate nations after the war? Is that important to know or is it not? Okay. It is important to know. Okay, that's definitely important to know. It's a part of the passage. So it's given. So the first question I asked is, is it important? If the answer is yes, then I know it's given. And now I ask, is it true? 
So is it true that pre-World War II Germany was divided into two separate nations after the war? And yes, it's true. Okay, so this is important. It's definitely true. Uh, so we can move to the next one. This should be easy. You should not have to search for that. Okay. Uh, 22, the post-dem conference was a chief cause of the Cold War. Okay. So here, we have to know, okay, uh, is it important to know about the post dam conference? So is it important to know this? And more importantly, is it important to know that it was the chief, the main cause? Does anybody recall reading um, that this was the main cause of the Cold War? Anybody read that? No, it's not that important. Um, we didn't read about the main cause of the Cold War. Uh, this passage is not about the Cold War. Okay, The Cold War is mentioned briefly, but it's not the focus of this passage. The focus of this passage is Berlin from 1945 to 1990. So the answer is no, therefore it's not given. Okay? And a lot of you said that. A lot of you said, nope, it's not given. Okay? The key is here in the chief cause, Cold War. Too much detail. We didn't get into that much detail about the Cold War. What was the cause of it? What wasn't? Okay? Uh, number 23, if, if you're stuck. So if some of you are like, oh, that's a maybe. Okay, Adrian, fine, you got that, but I didn't. Uh, it's a maybe. Um, so let's, let's say some of you right now are saying, hey, Adrian, I'm not one of those students that got that one. Uh, help me out here. I need a little bit more, more strategy uh, for this one so that I can get that not given question. Okay, so here what I can do is look for this post dam conference. I remember there was something about this. And because I did a good job with these questions and because I have a good idea of where it's located, I can search for that element, okay? I can search for this conference element. I remember that was somewhere in paragraph uh, B or C, okay? And I remember the Cold War was somewhere around there as well, okay? So I see the Cold War here, all right? Um, but I don't see that post dam conference. So if I'm really searching, and I might even use up as much as one or two minutes, but I would probably only do this once I've answered all of the questions. So remember it was in B, the post dam conference, okay? So came to an agreement at the post dam conference. They divided the country roughly uh, evenly into four. So it's not given. So there's no more information given here about the Cold War and this conference, okay? So now I know that not given is my best answer, okay? So maybe is okay. It's okay to answer maybe. But again, just leave that till the end, okay? If you have to check, check at the end. Make sure you have enough time, all right? Okay, <clears throat> the United States, France, and the United Kingdom wanted an open German economy. Is that important? So important what germany france united states wanted for the economy of the germans is that important to this uh, passage of germany and uh, berlin yeah it's important of course we clearly read about that so it's definitely given okay and then you can ask is it true so is it true that United States, France, United Kingdom wanted an open German economy. Yeah, it's true. Good for you. So you got that. Okay. Number 24, the Berlin blockade was caused by Soviet action in West Berlin. Okay. Uh, Berlin blockade by Soviets, important. Okay. Is it important? Yeah. So Amanjat Kaur says, yeah, I think that's important. So it's important, so yes, so it's given. Okay, so is it true? 
Is it true that the Berlin blockade was caused by Soviet action in West Berlin? Meheni Merzoki says, that's false. Yeah, why is it false? Good. A lot of you got that. It's fantastic. Why is it false? So it's given information, but it's false information, according to the passage. Why is it false information? It's not true. Yeah, that's right, Siam, because it was in East Berlin, not West Berlin, right? The... Um, the Soviets had control of East Berlin, and they created the blockade in East Berlin, not in West Berlin. Okay. Oh, sorry, my bad. Uh, my bad, my bad, my bad. False, false. Uh, true, true. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, Beckjan says, no, no, wait a second. Yeah, no, it's not false, it's true. Okay. This was a tricky one. I'll explain that in a second. So uh, this is true. Okay, so it was caused by Soviet action in West Berlin. Okay, so it's true, and everybody's probably surprised. Um, why? Okay, I'll explain it here. So let me show you. This, was, this is where visualization comes in handy. So here's Germany. Okay, uh, here's uh, East. Here's West. Here's Berlin. Okay, uh, Berlin's divided into two. So the Soviets m created the blockade here. Okay, so what happened was Berlin is in East Germany and it's divided into two parts, into East and West. And what happened was the, because the Soviets controlled this division here between East and West, they created a blockade so that the American supplies couldn't go through. So what happened was the Americans and the British had to fly the airplanes, okay? So this is where you have your airplanes. And they had to fly the airplanes over this blockade into uh, West Berlin. Does, does that make sense now, how this answer is true? So because the Soviets actually created the action in West Berlin. That was tricky, okay? Um, but if you didn't get that, that's fine, okay? All right? So Soviets blockaded East Germany, which also blockaded West Berlin. Okay, that's a tricky one, but it's true, okay? Does that make sense if I say it like that? So Soviets blockaded... East Germany, which closed off West Berlin. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, it was a tricky one, but hey, students, again, if you get 12 out of 13 questions correct, you're still doing a fantastic job. Okay, um, let's go on to the next one, 25. West Germans and Soviets were responsible for the construction of the Berlin Wall. Important? Yes. So it's given. Okay, is it true? No, it's false, right? Yeah, so 25 is false because 25 says west and this should be east. Here, we're sure, okay? Now, if you have this kind of situation, you might think, oh, wait a second, if this is false, I need to take a second look at this one. Maybe there's something tricky there. Okay, and then the last one. So the complete destruction of the wall took less than a year to complete. So is it important? Uh, how long the wall took to destroy for the last one? For number 26, yes, it's important. Is it true? Uh, I remember exactly how many months because I was surprised how long it took. Okay, uh, check it. Okay, if you're not sure, this is paragraph G. Right? So we can check. 
especially if you have enough time. Uh, and I remember the answer was here. Demolition of the wall took 17 months to complete. Yeah, very good, Lydia. So therefore, the answer for question 26 is false. Okay. All right. So students, uh, again, using the right strategies, uh, being the turtle, reading, visualizing, using active reading where you're keeping an order of events and images in your mind is the trick to quick and correct reading answers. Okay. So that's what you have to do. Again, this passage was taken from our eighth exam which will be released later this year. If you'd like to get access to our premium IELTS courses, uh, you can visit aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gieltshelp.com for general IELTS and join our premium packages there. Thank you so much members. Thank you so much viewers for joining me on this uh, interesting IELTS slash history lesson of the day. I will be back tomorrow with question and answer session for members at an earlier time. And at the same time, uh, I will host a class for speaking part three. You're very welcome, Mohammed Azat Bumi. You're welcome. I'm glad many of you enjoyed this and we were reminded of that important part of the last century's history. That's it for today, students. Relax for the rest of your day. If it's late in your country, I wish you sweet dreams, a good night's rest. Hopefully you wake up energized and ready to tackle the fresh day tomorrow. I'm Adrian, signing out from Budapest. Bye for now.